Hello everyone, Noto Addiction speaking here. And in today's video, we're gonna discuss how gambling addiction destroyed my life. If you're new here or you've been here, gonna click that like button, go ahead and comment. Gonna subscribe, click that notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I drop a video. And without further ado, let's get into this topic. Now, thing is, I'm gonna tell you what gambling does, man. Gambling puts you in a state of mind where you just feel like you can't get help from anybody. You feel like you can do everything on your own. You get you get brave, you get unspeakably delusionally brave with things that you need to live with. And now I've told the stories of how I would go and work 40 hour weeks and better way my whole check. I told about the stories where I would better entire when I would work 40 hour weeks with overtime, but about 80 hour weeks, overtime with 16 hour shifts, working a heavy box warehouse job. And I bet it all the gambling, I bet it all the money away in a few hours. And I've told that story. But you know what hurts even more? Is I never told like the complete story yet. But this would hurt really more, much more than working for the full week and still gambling away your money now when I was I had my house it got to the point where uh, I needed some bill money because I was kind of running low a little bit and my mom she hadn't helped me out she gave me about let me say let's say about $800 to help me kind of get out of that rut just a little bit now, in order to um, in order to get out of that rut, in order to get out of that rut, I needed, I needed about eight hundred dollars, and about I'd say about nine hundred fifty dollars. I had the other about amount of money, but it was uh, it was straight. So what happened was, I would get the money. I pleaded her, you know, I told her about the situation. She got it from me, you know. And that was out of her savings that she needed from like her car or something like that. To fix it fix it up and she needed it back you know and it was like pretty much money that she needed but I needed it at that moment in time and what she needed to do with the money was for like a later date so I'll get the, I'll get the money but it turns out that the office was closed because you know for some reason they didn't have like some type of online pay they was kind of old-fashioned here and which was strange to me but then I would hold on to the money and what I would have it in my hand because for some apparent reason it was closed and they wouldn't be open for like another two or three days basically like over the weekend or something so I would go down to the gambling hall I had my own money I had my own money about like a little bit of money that I was gonna play and not bother with you know on the side it was about 60 bucks outside of whatever I needed to really do anything with I felt like, oh, it couldn't hurt if I just bet a little bit of this money. You know, even if I lost this, I still could at least pay that bill. You know what I mean? So I wasn't really thinking much of it. But when I went in there and it's like when you're doing it, it's like it just something just take over you when you're doing it. Because you go in there with a plan, right? You go in there thinking that, OK, I want to conduct myself and everything is just going to be all right. And that, you know, I, I got control over this. Ain't You know, I say this ain't nothing. You know, all I got to do is just stop. You know, ain't nobody, ain't nothing, ain't nothing control, control me. But something like this takes over you when the money gets in your, in your possession. And after I didn't play that money with the 60 bucks, of course, the way I played it, didn't, it didn't really last much longer. And then that little evil voice just told me, oh, there's that now hundred dollars in your savings. And, if, and for the life of me, I just couldn't, I just really just, I tried to shake that for so, for so long, man. I tried to shake that. I pondered on it for so long. I was back and forth with it, back and forth with it. Oh, I'm not going to touch that money. I'm not going to touch that money. I need this money, you know, in, the, in order to keep my spot. And that she, you know, my mom, she, uh, she, you know, she gave her money that she really needed. So I didn't want to mess that up. But lo and behold... I found out some type of reason, some type of way to escape the, the responsibility that I was going to put on myself, the responsibility that I need, that I, uh, of, um, having this money. 
to do the right thing with it. So I, I found a way to rationalize why I could play it and get it back and push it back. You know, we all, that's one thing we always do. We always find the perfect reason why we can do something, even if it ain't good for us. You see what I mean? You're going to find that reason. So I ended up finding that reason. And within the next two hours, I played and I just destroyed all that money that I needed. You see what I mean? And on top of that, like it just it just it just took me out because to keep it a buck, it's different when you just plan your own money and you and you just cool with everything else. It's different when you just plan with your own. But when you plan with somebody's own that cared about you, what's up, man? <laughs> what's up, John? It's my buddies right here, man. And uh, when you're playing with someone's buddy, like my mom's, that that she really like, really gave us out of the kindness of her heart, and was really like looking out for me when she did it for me. It just does something to you because it ain't your money. You know what I mean? If it was my money, I could have brushed it off a little bit, a little bit more. But it just hurt me because it was the money that she really hurt, that she really tried to help me with, and that would be detri detrimental to her. Because then I don't have to pay back that money, and on top of paying her back the money. But let's not even get into just about the money part, because that that hurt that hurt in and of itself. And yes, I did end up losing my spot over that. Okay. And the thing is, I was always riding in her car, in the back seat of her car. It was like kind of a beat up Toyota, simply because I was never, I, I was never to the point where I could really afford to get anything else because of this addiction. Every time, everything I did would go to that. I always wonder why I always, all the money, I could never save any money. I could never ever save money when I was addicted to this. And it was, that's how I was destroying my life. I didn't know it. I felt like I was having fun. I felt like everything was okay. I think I, I felt like everything was all right, but it just wasn't. It really wasn't. I tried to make everything feel okay, but it, it don't. And another thing I talk about when it comes to gambling addiction a lot, that many don't necessarily think it's a big thing but it really is it's the psychological state of mind that it puts you in it's never just the gambling in and of itself it's never just the act in and of itself the money you lose it's not it's not about the money in itself that you lose it's about the, the state of mind that it puts you in what, it, what how is it going to make you feel when you lose that money you know what i mean so some people is is it's normal but some people it's drastic but for even those that feel like it's normal, it gets to the point where you feel numb to this type of addiction. That's when it gets dangerous as well. Because when you get numb to this addiction, it, it causes you to isolate yourself from everybody. And how, how is that? Now, now somebody asked me a question. How does it begin to make you isolate yourself? It makes you isolate yourself because once you get to the point where you start losing your money and you start just really diving in deep with it, you become a hardcore gambler. You don't you don't want to be around nobody no more because you can't explain what's going on to anybody. You don't think anybody's gonna take it seriously if somebody be like, oh, what happened to your money? I mean, I thought you could be able to pay for this, and you tell them you gambled it away. You feel like everybody's gonna laugh at you. So on top of just facing the embarrassment of gambling all your money, you rather just be in you rather go along with yourself in exile and and. You know, as opposed to telling anybody what's really going on with you in your life. Why you don't have this. And you feel like, oh, I'm just moving over here. I'm just downsizing. But really, you just lost some money because you, your bill money to be able to pay for the mortgage or your rent and stuff like that. You could keep the lights on and you couldn't keep up with it even though you was making twice enough money. But when you have a gambling addiction, it doesn't matter how much money you make because it'll, it'll prey on you all the same. And especially when you're betting your livelihood. But that state of mind, that, see, having those things attached to it, things that you need to live with, that those things that you need to survive in this life and to keep things going, is what really puts you in that state of mind. It's never just the money in and of itself because if you could gamble and do this and not have the risk of losing everything and, and you can go back to your everyday life with no consequences, it just wouldn't really necessarily be a thing. But at the end of the day, some people, you know, there's, there's a certain degree where 
you know, when you think you're about to win something, you get like a near miss win. Oh man, it's you know, stress levels go up and down while you're playing because you're you're so you're constantly at the edge of your seat, biting the nails, grabbing the ends and and seats and parts of the uh, arm of the couch, hoping that your your uh bet lands on something. You know what I mean? So that's a major thing in and of itself. You know what I mean? So I'm not really gonna necessarily get into that, but it destroyed my life because. It just it makes you think that you don't need anybody. You don't you, you don't want to be around nobody else after you lose your money. You know what I mean? You start to lash out. I would lash out on people because I lost my money. It wasn't their fault. All they was doing was trying to check on me. But I would cuss them out because I was so mad about my own addiction. I was so mad about what I did to myself. And it'll destroy your life because you'll you'll end up secluding yourself. You'll end up turning all your friends away. You'll feel like you don't have nowhere else to turn. You become you get numb to this. But oh, I just lost this amount. I'll just shake back tomorrow. You know what I mean? And then when it gets to the point where being numb starts to run out, because you you start to mess up your livelihood. Like I was saying earlier, I know I kind of got off subject, but when you you attach your livelihood to this type of thing, this is what makes it dangerous. People wouldn't think it was that bad unless you can lose your house over it, unless you can lose your car over it, unless you, your family will turn your back over on you over it and without even giving you a chance. Some people will try to understand it, but nobody takes that type of addiction that serious. So in turn, you'll segregate yourself because one, you'll think they'll make a fool of you and two, because they naturally wouldn't take, serious, take it seriously anyway. Society doesn't really take gambling addiction serious because there ain't really nothing being done about it like that when you look at the bigger picture. You look at the advertisement, all you see is the big, the big wins. And this, in turn, is what takes it down the deadly road. And how it could have ultimately destroyed my life. It's by me thinking about unaliving myself after I've lost everything that she gave me and that I had to contribute to the situation. Because that, that took a really big toll on me because I wasn't just looking at the money in any amount or, or I wasn't just looking at the fact that I lost the house how it made me feel to know that she gave me her last in order to help me out you know what i'm saying it was a sentimental uh part aspect of that money it wasn't the money in and of itself so that made me feel like i just wasted everything you know her blessing on me and that really took a, a effect of me because i really care about her you know what i mean I, I care for my mom so the fact that I actually wasted away what she tried to help me with and something that she needed to survive, this was almost too much for me one night. It almost really was. So that's how I ultimately destroyed my life because it put me in a in a mental state of where nobody would want to be around me and I wouldn't let anybody be around me. You see what I mean? I, I would I would put myself in these in these in these positions and then blame everybody else. That's what gambling does to you. It, it makes you so mad. It almost diagnoses you with something that it diagnoses you with something. And it turns you into a person that you not even really are. You could be the sweetest person in the world, but when you're gambling and you're struggling with this addiction, the ups and downs of this addiction will turn you into a, a totally, completely different person. And it's the truth. For those that actually struggle and know anybody that struggled with this, know this, know this for a fact. It will turn you into somebody that you never thought you could be. That you never thought that you would even even come come close to even being like. You could come, come, come you like if you have some type of ego alter ego, you will actually become that person doing this addiction. And people will actually try to diagnose you with something medical when really the stress is in the bed. That's what it would do. That's how it destroyed my life. So this is just kind of like a heads up and a warning. And especially for those that you know that have family members that gamble a lot. And if you actually watch them closely and see the ups and downs of how they are and notice how they're good this at this time and not this time. But the good thing about it is, it's so I mean the bad thing about it is we're so good at hiding this. So sometimes you won't know for a while. A lot of people you had this period where you call we're lying dormant. We're keeping all those feelings bottled up inside. And we, we tend to let this this bust and erupt like a volcano. At the end of the day, and that volcano eruption for some people could probably be self harm. That volcano eruption could be segregation for some, and that volcano for eruption for a lot of other people could ultimately be the result of them unaliving themselves. This is serious. 
But I just wanted to give you guys a story of how gambling addiction ruined my life and, ho and how it possibly is ruining the lives of your family and friends or your own life if you can resonate with this. But it's not all addiction here. If any of this uh, resonated with you in any shape, form, go to click that like button, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you notified whenever I drop a video. And remember, guys, a gambler never wins until they quit. I'm out.